Hi guys, Howard here with a cool major pentatonic trick that you can apply to your playing very quickly and very easily and get some really cool melodic sounds going, okay? So this is in the styles of, say, Dickie Betts with the Allman Brothers, maybe Robbie Robertson with the band, George Harrison with the Beatles, of course, and maybe even a little uh, Gilmore and Jeff Beck thrown in for color, okay? So uh, this is how it works. Uh, we're dealing with the major pentatonic scale, so we're talking about playing over major chords in particular, okay? So uh, let's say we've got three really easy chords, like a G, and then a C add nine. You can play just a regular C if you want, but I like that sound, <laughs> to a D. Right? Uh, those three chords can be found together in some fashion or other in numerous songs, right? So you could just strum those chords out, you know, do a campfire version. course that would sound perfectly fine and especially if someone was singing that would be a nice simple accompaniment okay but let's say you'd like to do something a little bit more maybe play some melodic lines or licks in between the chords maybe in between a vocal or just as soloing ideas because this is great for that as well okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play a little something using those three basic chords and then we'll break down exactly what I did where I got the information from, and you'll see just how easy it is for yourself, okay? I'm gonna add a little bit extra in there just to keep it interesting and spice it up a little bit, but uh, that just makes it more fun, right? So here we go. So let's take a look at what I played. First we have a G chord, of course, and what you want to do is spot that root note, which is the third fret on the sixth string. This is a G major pentatonic scale, and it's the perfect accompaniment to that chord. So we play the third fret, the fifth fret, and the seventh fret. So we play three notes, three, five, seven. Now on the next string, the A string, we play five to seven, two notes. So the basic pattern is three notes, then two notes. Then it will be three notes again, and two notes, three notes, and two notes. So we play three, five, seven on the sixth string, then five to seven on the A string. Then we go to the D string at the fifth fret, and we play three notes again. So we will play five, seven, nine. And then on the next string, the G string, we play seven to nine, two notes. So it's the exact same pattern, just repeating itself an octave higher. Three notes, two notes, three notes, two notes. And to complete the picture, even though I didn't use it all the way to the 12th fret, we would go to the eighth fret on the B string because of the way the guitar is tuned. But we would still play three notes, eight, 10, 12. And then 10 to 12 on the first E string. So again, it's the same pattern over and over again. One, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two. And of course, playing it in reverse can be really advantageous as well. And that is a most excellent scale to accompany that G major chord. So now let's get into what I played exactly. You can see it up on the tab, but I'll play it nice and slow. So you can see just by adding some slides and some hammer-ons, uh, it gives a little flavor, right? All of a sudden it sounds pretty musical. So let me explain what I did at the end. So let me do the lick again. What I did there is I laid my second finger down on the 8th fret on the B string. 
So now I have a double stop between the G string and the B string. Seventh fret on the G, eighth fret on the B string. I slid up a whole step and back. And you'll notice that all of those notes, the seven and the eight and the nine and the 10, they are all part of that scale. They are right inside that scale. Then I laid my ring finger down on the ninth fret on the D string. That makes a G chord. That's an inverted G chord. So that's a neat little trick as well, okay? So we have. And then we went to the C add nine. And it's the same idea, exact same idea. You spot the root note of the chord, which in this case is the third fret on the uh, A string, and it's the same scale. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. The only difference is the B string, right? Because of the way the guitar is tuned, but it's still. So that's three, five, seven on the A string, five to seven on the D string, then five, seven, nine on the G string the three notes and then eight to ten on the B string two notes and then of course we're only dealing with five strings so it's one two three eight ten twelve on the first string so that's the scale pattern off of the A string so that's going to be a really good scale to accompany that C chord So let's break that one down and show you exactly what I played. It starts out the same way. And then what I did is I'm barring across the D and the G strings at the fifth fret, which puts you right inside a C major bar chord. And then I'm gonna do a hammer on. So what you wanna do is make sure that your, your technique is really solid, like your finger is as straight as possible. And when you do the hammer, you're gonna need your thumb back behind the neck a little bit. You want to hammer with the very tip of your ring finger because we're not hammering both strings. We're not doing that, we're just doing classic style, right? Okay, so you want to make sure that you're on the tip of this finger and you can clear that G string. All right, you can see that on the tab, hopefully. Then what we do is essentially we play it an octave higher, very similar. Okay, so what I did there, you might want to use your second finger for this as I slid on the G string from seven to nine. And then it's the same idea. This time we're barring across the first E string and the uh, B string at the eighth fret. And you can see I'm doing the same hammer on it. It's not both strings, just the B string. So we have. You can see I use my third finger, so that works as well, right? Again, nice and slow. So I came back after the hammer on, resting it at the eighth fret, and then slide from nine to seven on the G string. Okay. against that C chord. Now, a little bit of information about that, okay? If you take a look at this, that's a C major triad, right? Tenth on the D string, nine on the G, and then eight and eight on the B and the E. So once you know that, if you know what the chord is, for instance, if you had a G chord, and you're thinking of a G triad, you can do the same idea. Or, that's pretty cool as well, kind of Hendrix sounding. And then go to the fifth fret on the uh, G string. And you can bring all the strings in if you want to, or just two, and then drop it to four. So you're going, but with all those notes ringing together. So in the same respect, if you had an A chord, right? Just a little uh, cool little trick to uh, add into the mix here. So what we have so far then is this. Right? And 
And then we head back to the G chord, and this is where I threw in something a little bit extra, and I'll explain this as well. What I played was this. Very kind of David Gilmore or Dickie Betts, or as I say, Robbie Robertson as well, okay? So what I'm doing there uh, is I'm visualizing a simple D shape, okay? So you know you got a D chord here, and the root note is that third fret on the B string. That's a D note. So of course this would be an E, this would be an F, and this would be a G, the chord we're looking at, right? And we all know that trick of adding the pinky to the D chord. Right? That's all I'm thinking about here. I'm thinking about... So I'm taking that idea and playing it as individual notes. And then down here, that's simply the octave. We have C, B, G, D, C, B, G, D, C, B, G. Three octaves. And that's a great thing that you can always play against a major chord as well, right? That's a, another additional little cool trick that you can add to the major pentatonic. So now we have all together. and I simply played a couple of strums. And then it's the same idea. We want to find a D major pentatonic scale now. This will be on the uh, A string at the fifth fret, and it'll look just like the C major pentatonic that we did, right? Because we're starting on the fifth string. So it's five, seven, nine. There's your three notes. Then seven, nine. There's your two notes. Then on the G string, of course, seven, nine, eleven, three notes. 10 to 12 on the B string, two notes, and then 10, 12, 14 on the first E string. So we have okay, and I didn't play uh, nearly that much of the scale. All I played was this. And I'll explain that, okay? So it starts out the exact same way. You can see it on the tab, but uh, just nice and slowly. So that's exactly what we did off of C, right? But it's got a different upside to it, so to speak. So this is the same idea what I was just talking about. If you look at a D chord, It's the same note, so that's another thing that you can keep in mind, a cool little trick if you've got a D uh, major bar chord, or with those fingers, right? And actually, if you take a D major bar chord and you invert it, I'm barring across the, the uh, seventh fret, essentially the first four strings, or if you want to grab all five, that's fine as well. And then with my ring finger, I'm playing the ninth fret on the A string, which puts the major third of the chord into the uh, low end of it. And then you can do cool things like that, but more on that later, okay? So again, this is what I played nice and slow. And I slid from that ninth fret to the seventh fret. And then we moved back to the C chord. Okay, so it's the same idea uh, from the C add nine we played. Right, now what I did right away there is I slid, grab the bar right away, strike it again, and slide it back and forth. These are fourths again. Right? And all of those notes are within the scale that we're working with. Seven, nine, 
seventh fret on the A string, back to the double stop, then back to the A string, seven, five. Nice and slow we have. And then finally, sliding from five to seven and back on the uh, sixth string. And I played a little something extra at the end. You can see that on the tab. These are double stops uh, once again, and I'll be doing a more extensive video specifically on double stops in the uh, very near future here. So there you go, a cool little major pentatonic trick that you can add to your playing pretty easily, and now you know how it works. If you've got a chord, whatever it happens to be, a C chord. If you've got a G chord. Uh, the patterns are tried and true, okay? So I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you get a lot out of it. And uh, as always, all the best to everyone. If you've enjoyed the video and you haven't subscribed, please take a moment to do that, and that way you'll know when I post new videos. And uh, also, if you want to support the channel, simply become a member. A lot of people ask me, how do I support the channel? Just become a member, right? Just click the Join button uh, from the home page there or below any video that you're watching, and uh, that helps support the channel a little bit, okay? So anyway, we'll see you guys soon. Uh, again, all the best to everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.